Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss in this video is history of legal profession in India. Though we are so enthusiastic about the law and legal profession, but how many of us actually try to understand the evolutionary aspect of legal profession in India? How it started? What were the system during the ancient period? during the medieval period and during the modern period so there are many aspects of legal profession though if we talk about the ancient period at that time as all of us know that it was king's court okay so at that time there was as such no specific or exclusive legal department okay rather it was mixed with the king's court okay now if we talk about the medieval period at that time when mughal came they introduced the term vakil and to an some extent they separated the legal department and started adjudicating the case accordingly however the kind of modern system we have that is developed over period in time by british okay so in this video we will focus exclusively on the legal profession in india during the british period right so the modern means of legal profession can be traced back with the establishment of the first british court in bombay when it is in 1672 by governor onjia okay but at that time the admission of attorneys was placed in the hands of the governor in council see focus on the sentence at that time the admission of attorneys was placed in the hands of the governor in council and not with the court okay so see by the time still it was not so distinct therefore prior to the establishment of the mayor's courts in 1726 in madras kolkata and bombay there were no legal practitioners so as we have discussed that though bombay court was set up in 1672 but until 1726 there was no legal practitioner okay however until 1846 the legal profession was not open for all this is another fact that you need to pay attention it was restricted but through the legal practitioners act of 1846 the doors of legal profession were thrown open to all those duly qualified certified and good character irrespective of nationality or religion okay see the first thing happened in 72 that is the first court in bombay legal practitioners were not allowed secondly in 1726 mayor's courts set up in three presidencies that is madras kolkata and bombay but still legal practitioners were not so open and when it is opened for all qualified lawyers that is in 1846 through the legal practitioners act right okay but women however were still excluded from the legal profession at this stage so women were not allowed by that time but through the legal practitioners women act of 1923 so see how the date is changing women were allowed when in 1923 okay and after the independence the legal profession in india which includes the law practice as well as professional legal education is governed by the advocates act 1961 okay besides the bar council of india in short bci is envisaged under the advocates act as a body for regulating the minimum standards to be maintained by institutions imparting legal education in india so bar council of india is an administrative body that regulates 
and supervises all these legal provisions regarding the legal practice regarding the legal education and all in india right the reformation of legal education in india undertaken since the late 1980s at the initiative of the bci the university grant commission that is ugc in short you know that the law commission of india and various state governments has led to the establishment of various national law schools in india in the last two decades okay so see th that was the another initiative to setting up the national law schools in order to promote the legal education and as well as legal profession okay so this movement which was pioneered by professor n r madhava menon who was instrumental in the setting up of the first national law school in bangalore and other leading academicians in india has resulted in the establishment of around 17 national law schools and a few other new generation law schools in the public as well as the private sector so it was introductory remark a sort of now we will see the legal profession on the timeline okay so uh, starting with the 1672 what happened that already we have discussed in my introduction that is the british court in bombay was set up by onzier okay who was the governor at that time after 1672 the next important date is 1726 what happened in that year is there was no established legal profession until the establishment of the mayor's court and mayor's court was set up in 1726 okay and those who practiced law were devoid of legal training and some of the functionaries under the mayor's court okay were dismissed servants of the british east india company so what it's saying that one who was practicing in the mayor's court they were not actually the trained lawyers or qualified lawyers rather they were the civil servants okay either they were dismissed or retired or something like that so those people were practicing there okay now the next important date is 1774 what happened in this year supreme court of judicature established by a royal charter at calcutta later on similar courts were also set up in madras in 1801 and in bombay in 1823 besides the regulating act of 1773 empowered the supreme court to approve admit and enroll advocates and attorneys at law so see gradually the power is given attorneys of record were authorized to appear plead and act for the suitors okay attorneys were not admitted without a recommendation from high officials in england or a judge in india so who could be attorney at that time one who is recommended by either high officials in england or a judge in india okay the term advocate at that time was extended only to the english and irish barristers please pay attention i am repeating this the term advocate at that time was extended only to the english and irish barristers and members of the faculty of advocates in scotland so attorneys similarly referred to british attorneys and solicitors only see how restricted use of all these words were at that time the calcutta supreme court therefore appeared to be the exclusive fortress of british barristers advocates and attorneys okay so there were no indians as such and madras gained its first barrister in 1778 with mr benjamin sullivan okay who was the first barrister at madras court okay the point that you need to focus on that is the charter introduced in india the british system of legal practice and profession were Indians had no right to appear before the supreme courts and this trend continued in Bombay and Madras as well in spite of the fact that both these courts were established much later okay so we have seen that Indians were not allowed by the time in such courts 
okay and in addition to this the another fact that is in contrast to the courts in the presidency towns because it is the story of only presidency towns that is bombay madras and calcutta okay the legal profession in the mufassil towns was established guided and controlled by legislation okay in the diwani courts legal practice was neither recognized nor controlled and practice was carried on by wakils as we have discussed that this term was introduced by the mughals okay wakils had even been appearing in the courts of the nawabs and there were no laws concerning their qualification relationship to the court mode of procedure of ethics or practice all those wakils who were appearing in the nawab's courts okay there was no as such defined qualification for them there were two kinds of agents at that time first one was untrained relatives or servants of the parties in court and second one was professional pleaders who had training in either hindu or muslim law so one was the untrained basically relatives and or servants of the parties okay and but the second one was the trained either in hindu law or in muslim law okay bengal regulation 7 of 1793 was enacted as it was felt that in order to administer justice courts must have pleading of causes administered by a distinct profession only men of character and education well versed in the mohammedan or hindu law and in the regulations passed by the british government would be admitted to plead in the courts so what it is saying here that only those people who had the knowledge of either hindu law and muslim law they would be allowed okay not everyone they should be subjected to rules and restrictions in order to discharge their work diligently and faithfully by upholding the client's trust okay so some of the rules and regulations of such practice being also developed for this lawyers okay now the next important date is 1793 what happened that year was the bengal regulation 7 of 1793 created for the first time a regular legal profession in the companies courts okay the regulation was one for the appointment of wakils or native pleaders in the courts of civil judicature sadar diwani adalat in bengal bihar and orissa only muslims and hindus could be enrolled as pleaders the regulation also provided for a wakalatnama the another point that you need to understand here and also you should memorize the wakalatnama so much important term it is so you can understand the genesis of this term i repeat the regulation also provided for a wakalatnama a party would execute a wakalatnama in favor of a pleader authorizing him to represent the party so the purpose of wakalatnama was to authorize the legal professional to represent the respective party and act on his behalf in a matter this was the genesis of the wakalatnama as we know today okay the bengal regulation that is 27 of 1814 consolidated the law on this subject The pleaders were empowered to act as arbitrators and to give legal opinions on payment of fees. So see, the concept of fees also developed at that time. Thereafter in 1833, the Bengal Regulation 12 modified the provisions of earlier regulations regarding selection, appointment and remuneration of these pleaders. It permitted any qualified persons of any nationality and religion to be enrolled as pleader in the sadar diwani adalat so 1833 was the year in which everyone is allowed to enter in this profession irrespective of his religion and nationality now the next important date after 1793 was 1833 as we discussed that at it is opened now the next important year was 1846 what happened at that year the legal practitioners act of 
was the first pan india law concerning the regulation of the indian legal profession so see 1833 evidenced some development and in 1846 the first pan india law concerning the regulation of the indian legal profession was set up a religious test for enrollment as a pleader was abolished so earlier it used to be a religious test so that was abolished and persons of any nationality and religion could be enrolled as a pleader okay every barrister enrolled in any of her majesty's courts in india became eligible to plead in the sadar adalat subject to the rules of those courts applicable to pleaders as regards language or any other matter so some of the restrictions were there regarding the language and all of of course language was the barrier but nevertheless everyone is allowed to practice the legal practitioners act also permitted vakils to enter into agreements with their clients for their fees for professional services okay so how the professionalism in this legal practice getting evolved just are you paying attention on that okay now the next important year was 1862 what happened that year the high courts started by the crown were established at kolkata bombay and madras the high court bench was designed to combine supreme court and sadar court traditions okay later additional high courts were established in allahabad that is in 1886 patna that is in 1916 and lahore that is in 1919 okay so after that the another important year was 1879 The Legal Practitioners Act of 1879 repealed the Pleaders, Mukhtars and Revenue Agents Act 1865. And what happened then? During this time in British India there were six grades of practitioners namely advocates, solicitors, attorneys and vakils of the High Court and Pleaders, Mukhtars and Revenue Agents in the lower courts. Vakils became the distinct grade above the pleader okay the act brought all six grades of legal practitioners into the one system okay so see what happened earlier it was in order and categorized but through this act all these six grades of legal practitioners merged at one place okay under the jurisdiction of the high courts okay so in order to be a vakil the candidate had to study at a college or university master the use of english and pass a vakils examination so english was essentially required and then and once he completed the college and university education in english then he was needed to pass a vakils examination in order to become a vakil okay by 1940 a vakil was required to be a graduate with an llb okay so see how the legal education also getting evolved through the legal profession from a university in india in addition to three other certified requirements the certificate should be proof that a person had passed in the examination that is llb examination read in the chamber of qualified lawyer and was a good character so these are the features in order to become a lawyer in fact sir sundarlal Jogendra Nath Choudhury, Ram Prasad and Motilal Nehru were all vakils who were raised to the rank of an advocate. So they were started as a vakil, but because of his skill sets, intellectuality, they were ranked as advocate. Now, the next important year was 1923. What happened that year? Barristers of England had come to occupy a predominant position in the legal profession of course by that time it was very restricted for the indians because the criteria those were defined to be an advocate was very difficult okay it was the majority of people from england okay the government of india in 1923 appointed the indian bar committee popularly known as the chamier committee to address the existing disparities in the legal profession okay it was chaired by sir edward chamier a retired chief justice of the patna high court okay 
The committee in its report stated that it was not practical at the time to organize the bar on an all India basis. Okay, so however the committee suggested the establishment of bar council for each of the high courts. So for all India level it wasn't possible so at least bar council should be set up for each high court. Okay, the committee suggested that a bar council should have power to make rules in matters such as qualifications and admissions of persons to be advocates of the concerned high court, legal education, discipline and professional conduct of advocates, terms on which advocates of another high court could appear occasionally in the concerned high court or any other matter prescribed by the high court so see the concept of bar council was established in 1923 keep in mind and what are the roles also defined okay so all these things defined in 1923 regarding the bar council of india so 1923 is important year for the bar council because it was started in that year now the next important year we have that is 1926 Giving effect to the Chamiyar Committee recommendations, the Central Legislature enacted the Indian Bar Council Act 1926. The act was to provide for the constitution and incorporation of bar councils to confer powers and impose duties on the bar councils and to consolidate the regulations pertaining to the legal profession. The bar councils could, with the consent of the High Court, make rules Four, see, pay attention. What type of rules were being made by the bar council? The rights and duties of advocates of high court and professional conduct. So, what will be the professional conducts of an advocate? That will be decided by the bar council. Legal education and examination. Of course, what will be the qualification and education? Of course, that also will be defined by the bar councils. The act eliminated the two grades of practitioners, the vakils and the pleaders, okay, by merging them in the class of advocates who were entitled as of right to practice. The another important point that you need to focus on, this act eliminated the two grades of practitioners that we were practicing by that time, that is vakils and the pleaders. And what it did, it merged both these two terms as advocate okay who was entitled as of right to practice in the high court in which they were enrolled and in any other court in british india subject to certain exceptions the high courts occupied considerable influence in these matters and the legal practitioners act 1879 remained intact okay pleaders muktars etc who were practicing in official courts remained out of the scope of the act. So these terms that is pleaders, muktars, those were being not touched. Okay. Those were the people who were practicing in official courts. Okay. But all these qualifications and the criteria and rules and regulations that is defined for an advocate who was practicing in the high court and who was planning to practice in the high court. Okay, now this was the pre-independence story or you can say that during the British India. After the independence, what happened that if you see that in 1923 and in 1926, most of the things that is by setting up the Bar Council, okay, through the Bar Council Act, so many things already defined. So after the independence, all these things basically organized categorized, systematized and consolidated okay through certain legislations okay so the important year after the independence was 1951 what happened that year the government of india constituted a committee namely indian bar committee under the chairmanship of justice s r das who was the judge of the supreme court to examine and report on the professional governance of lawyers in India. Okay. And the next important date was 1961. What happened that year? The another legislation is being enacted, namely Advocates Act. And what happened after that? As a result of the Advocates Act, 
admission, practice, ethics, privileges, regulations, discipline and improvement of the profession as well as law reform or now significantly in the hands of the profession itself. So earlier it was something like in a sporadic form so now it is consolidated at one place. Okay so the legal department separated entirely and everything taken care by the legal department only no one can interfere in that that we study under the heading of independence of judiciary okay so this is all regarding the evolutionary history of legal profession in india so we have seen that how the legal profession evolved especially during the british period this video is largely a commentary so i hadn't much a scope to show it something through animation and all so you need to focus on lecture in order to understand the history of legal profession in india so this is all for this video see you in next video until keep watching